Hi everyone, it seems ages since we've had something to get really excited about, but I can finally talk to you about Ryzen 2 and the plethora of X470 motherboards that I've managed to get my hands on nice and early. And we're gonna start with the Crosshair 7 Hero. So yes, the Ryzen 2 launch is imminent and today is the first time that I'm allowed to talk to you about the CPUs themselves and the boards. Now I do have in my possession the Ryzen 2 2700X and the 2600X and what you can see here, because I'm just going to skim this because this is about the board but I'm just going to give you the highlights although you will be able to go and find a dedicated video on just these. 4.2 GHz max boost, 3.6 GHz base. Um, these don't have uh, any graphics in them, so you do have to have a dedicated graphics card, and it does say that, but you know, the, the CPU box itself looks very similar to the old one. And then the 2700X, you can see here, 4.3 gigahertz max boost and 3.7 gigahertz base, um, base. This is eight cores, 16 threads. This is six cores and 12 threads. So they're the two CPUs that we've got to start with. There will be a dedicated review just on these CPUs going live on the 19th. I'm not sure whether I meant to tell you that or not, but anyway, so the board itself, we have the new ROG Crosshair 7 Hero. They're also calling it the Wi-Fi because it's all built in and all that sort of stuff. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a quick look at what's actually in the box first before we have a dedicated look at the board itself. Now, you do get a sticker pack, which is all kind of cool. You get some for the um, yeah, the centers of your fans and you get all the other ones. These ones are so you can label your cables, label your cables. Um, um, then we do get a cable mod code in the box. Now I'm gonna show you this, but this code can only be used once. So it's first come, first served. I would love it if you tweeted me, Instagrammed me, or even better, posted a picture on the OC3D forums if you do use that code. Remember, it can only be used once for 20% off. Uh, you get your driver CD, you get a coaster, you get a thing in here saying thank you for purchasing a ROG product. You get your normal manual as you would be used to. And then the other stuff in the box, I've all undone. There is uh, an addressable RGB extension cable. The addressable RGB is the uh, three pin with the gap one. That's very critical that you need to remember. You do get a normal RGB extension cable and that is the four pin one that you may be kind of used to. Just make sure that you get the arrow in the right place because the arrow is the 12 volt. Then you do get your wireless antenna and your stand. It's all kind of funky, magnetic as well. SLI bridge. You get a couple of the screws for your M.2s. So you get two M.2 screws, which is kind of cool on these. And then you get a load of satas. There's four in total. You get a couple of straight ones and a couple of angled ones. Um, and then the only other thing is the little um, uh, connector. So you can put all your cables for your case on before you fit this all as one thing onto your motherboard. I actually never use these and I'm that idiot that does it the hard way. Anyway, so they are your accessories, but then we get on to the uh, very kind of stealthy looking motherboard itself. Now I'm gonna leave that there for you to pause if you want to look at the board in depth uh, as a whole. Now don't forget, as we do film throughout the rest of the uh, video you can pause to see any of the parts that you want so we're going to go from top to bottom just to give you a look now the phases are eight plus four one two three four five six seven eight plus four yeah so they are slightly spread so you get eight phases for the cpu and the four for the soc so we can do that and we can scroll you down so that you can have a slow look as we go up with the board, which is done quite well. It's all very, very black as well. That's the overwhelming feeling with this is almost the um, crosshair black edition. 
normally it's all sort of like dark greys and stuff and it's all super black on this and I love it. There is kind of a print on the board as well. You can see it on the back as well. But on this side, the board is a much more satin colour. So the gloss print over the top actually shows up better. I actually personally quite like it. Now, uh, colouring on this, if you are worried about uh, LEDs, I will show you, but it's here and on here, as you would have expected with the old Intel boards. Up on this top right hand corner, you've got the CPU fan in the middle, CPU optional to the left, and then the AIO pump to the right. The AIO pump header will run at 100% though. So that can be kind of handy if you're looking for an overclocking header. Um, and it's also the one that you really want to plug your AIO pump into. But it's just something that you need to keep in mind if you are going to be thinking about plugging a fan into it. Then up here you have a normal RGB header and you've got an addressable RGB header at the top of the board as well. This is something new that Asus has started doing with this iteration of boards, both for AMD and the dreaded blue team. Then you do get a power button and a smaller reset button. PCI poster readout for um, overclocking, see if you're getting any hangs. It's also really handy, obviously, when it gets to 62, you can start smashing your delete button if you need to get into BIOS. You do have a uh, readout here so that you can um, use a multimeter to get some direct readings for the voltages that are going on in your board if you are going to be overclocking. Then you've got a USB 3.1 external here. We've got another fan header here. In fact, let's just do the fan. So we've had CPU optional, CPU, AIO header. Then we've got another fan header here, chassis fan two, chassis fan two. Then this is a high amp fan header down here so it's for really high drawing fans or again full speed then you've got the water cooling zone down here so you can plug your um, water in and out here and then you can also do your flow header on here then other fan headers we've got there's another one here this is chassis fan three and then the chassis fan one there um, so we've got where was two hang on two uh three one okay so that's where they are so one two three and then the rest of them are up here rgbs there's two there there's two more rgbs down here i have just noticed that we've got a water pump header just down here as well this will run at a hundred percent as well you've got a safe boot button and the retry switch button down the bottom as well as a slow mode switch the uh retry button can be really handy if um, you've had a BIOS hang and you don't want to press reset and then mess around with all of the gubbins with, let's say for argument's sake, when it goes, a window starts getting um, all finickety about it. Round the back of the board, business side of the board, there are loads of uh, USB 3s, which is epic. You also get an A and a C USB 3.1 Gen 2. You get the BIOS flashback here, and then you've also got uh, another USB 2 at the top, which they, they've got it marked as um, uh, Bluetooth, but I don't remember seeing any Bluetooth in the um, box. But I don't know, that's something I can look at when we do the full main review, because I'm, I'm not allowed to talk performance, I'm not allowed to review this now. It's literally just me giving you a quick look. Anyway, you get a BIOS flashback switch and then you get a clear CMOS switch. You've also got a PS2 out, gigabit ethernet. There's loads of stuff that they're talking about with the ethernet that you can go in now in the Asus software and you can, <coughs> excuse me, you can set certain apps to have certain amounts of bandwidth. So they've, they've done an awful lot of um, working on their software for that so it can be better for you guys in the long run. So you can literally give Chrome a certain amount of bandwidth, you can give your games like all of the bandwidth if you want, you can set up like wireless networks for your phone and all that kind of stuff as well. Something else that they've done, and I will talk about this in the, um, uh, the main bulk of the review, is there is a tiny little itty bitty clock uh, generator and there is also um, they've got an op amp now for better voltage monitoring and it's just in there it's that chip there that's your op amp uh, and that's so that they can monitor all the voltages super super carefully um, and it's something like I said I'm going to go into a lot more um, depth about uh, they've also got an upgraded um, future proof they're saying 32 megabyte ROM for the BIOS 
um, and that's 16 megabyte um, for the like the normal image and then there's uh, another 16 megabyte that they can use for future AM4 processor report, is what they're saying. There's also an external clock generator on the board, so that's so that you can keep the memory clocks and the CPU clocks completely separate, and you can also tweak the base clock and stuff like that. So there's a lot of really cool, funky things on here. Also, you do get a big M.2 heatsink, and they say this can drop the M.2 temperatures by up to 10 degrees. Um, rather than just delaying how quickly they warm up. But you get that one there, and there's an M.2 underneath that, and then there's uh, a secondary M.2 at the bottom. So we do actually get two M.2s on this as well, which I think is kind of cool, finally. Um, so it's a pretty ram-packed board. Now, I know a lot of people are always going to ask about the 8-pin and the extra 4-pin. Do I need to connect both? To be honest with you, I would say put the 8-pin in and then see how you get along. Not many people are really going to get to the point of needing that uh, extra additional power feed. Uh, I can't talk about any more than that at this present moment in time. That is just some kind of theoretical uh usages and all of that sort of stuff but it's there maybe if you were to need it probably like big high-end overclockers and stuff like that the other thing i didn't really draw a lot of attention to was the fact that the io shield on the back is actually built in on this one you don't have to add the secondary um uh you don't have to add it in special now the next bit always throws people because i'm absolutely positively, absolutely chuffing lootly not allowed to show you the board powered up. So you can see there's no CPU in there, it's not powered up, but I do have a magic cable which allows me to fire the board LEDs up. Now this is where the, the LEDs are. You get it around the chipset, there's a little um, hollow point in the middle on the chipset, uh, and then the LED can come through on the logo, and then you get some kind of underlighting going around as well, which does look kind of cool. It's very similar to the boards that you've had before or the previous generation ones and then you also get it on the top so you get the logo lit up you get a little bit underneath and then you can see that there's a tiny little bit of pickup on the edge of the heat sink there so that is me being able to show you what the actual lights look like and risking getting told off you can see there's the magic cable but the other thing that you can go and have a look at now they'll both be on the oc3d tv channel but you do need to go and have a look because this one for example is the prime pro uh, this will be on the rush kit channel but you'll be able to find it on the OC3D TV channel because I have a Rushkit playlist on there. So go and have a look. If you don't know what Rushkit is, it's my, own, my other little baby channel for just quick little videos, little teasers and stuff like that. But it's not the only board. No, 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 no. I have the Rogstrix X470F Gaming as well. So if you would like a look at this, and to be honest with you, I think this thing looks the absolute gonads. So if you fancy a look at that, you need to go and find that video as well. But for now at least, this is one of the videos I'm putting up today. TTL out.